hi everyone I'm back in Quebec uh, couldn't I didn't have enough time to do all my videos especially the long ones like this one that I didn't have enough time to do them didn't have enough time to upload them and uh, I didn't I even have enough time to do everything I wanted to do so this is a video a general video about the capitary center and what was going on there uh, yeah, to uh, so you guys know a little bit about what's gonna happen, what is happening, and uh, you'll understand a little more about uh, what I was living while I was in the ceremonies. I uh, firstly like to dedicate this video to my families, the Spooner family, the Rio Pel family, especially my dad. Thank you, dad, for uh, everything you taught us. The travels we did with you made us feel more humble about our, ourselves. Uh, we learned how to appreciate the luxury we live in, the water and everything. Because a lot of people in the Quebec, Canada, and I bet every rich country, they just like to cry for an, any and every reason there is. So thanks for that. Uh, thanks mom for your love and support. I love you both equally. Don't be jealous one of one of another <laughs> uh, Thank you for showing us uh, the more emotional part of life uh, Thank you Laurence. I love you my brother Thank you Geneviève And thank you Abby for being so cute uh, And that's about it. Uh, thanks to everyone in my family for your, your love and support. So, uh, okay, about ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a plant. There is a little. This is this vine of the dead. That is called ayahuasca, and the potion is called ayahuasca. That is a jaguar claw. It was for my protection, supposedly, in the jungle. So, ayahuasca contains a drug called DMT, which is the most powerful hallucinogenic in the world. Some people uh, create it artificially, they smoke it. It, uh, it uh, catapults you in the space for like 10 to 15 minutes, but there is no spiritual part attached to it. A lot of people experience talking to uh, entities that look like uh, aliens or elves and uh, they can't always recall what they saw as much as on ayahuasca it's like too intense and they're I don't know why they don't recall I haven't done it yet but the DMT that is contained in ayahuasca well that's a different animal uh, firstly uh, if you would eat or make a tea out of ayahuasca, you wouldn't feel shit. Because uh, DMT is contained in every plant, every living being on this planet. Our own brain uh, produces it. In the pineal gland. Uh, if you look at the, those sigils the Egyptians did with an eye and some kind of thing coming out with an arc. That's actually a, a cut of your brain on this side. The little thing that goes down is like your spinal cord. The eye in the middle is your pineal gland. Uh, so funny, fun scientific fact. It is also called the third eye. And there is a scientific reason for it. As well as other reasons. But uh, there are actually um, nerve cells. The same that are contained in your eyes that reach it so the light you absorb with your eyes goes to your third eye too in your brain um, okay about DMT oh yeah so how come how did people find out that uh, it wouldn't do shit and how come now it does something? Well, sh 
the history of it in the jungle, like 3,500 years ago approximately, people learned from the spirits of plant how to use it, how to discover it, and how to process it. If you consume ayahuasca, there is an enzyme in your stomach that destroys the, the DMT, so you won't feel anything. But some 3,000 years ago, the plants told them among the 150 million plants that exist in the Amazonian jungle, they told them about a root. And if they take that root, they mash it together with ayahuasca, they boil it for some say eight hours, some say three days, I don't know the recipe. Well, that root contains uh, an enzyme in the inhibitor and it destroys the enzyme in your stomach so the DMT can go through your body. Uh, yeah, they found that out. How? Yeah, probably the plant spirits, now that I know about them. So that's for ayahuasca. Second most important part, your shaman. Our shaman is called Don Luis, or his shaman name was Don Lucho. To be a shaman, you need to be a special person. You need to have gifts. Why does he have gifts? I don't know, maybe his heart was purer than most. Uh, his, a little bit of his story is that uh, he lived like uh, 15 to 20 kilometers from the where Capitari is now. In Capitari there was a shaman already. He was six or seven. He was living in a poor family. And uh, the guy had a many gifts. So when he went fishing, for some reason, all the fish came to him. He didn't need to, to stay there for long. All the fish wanted to get hooked on his uh, hook. I can't remember the, <laughs> the word in English, but and uh, the shaman heard about this little boy who seemed to be special and connected to the jungle. So they went to see his family. They saw how poor they were. So they said, "Oh, all right, we'll adopt him and we'll show him the ways of the shaman." So they accepted. So he went there, learned everything he could from what the shaman could teach him. And in the beginning of his 20s, the thing you have to do to become a shaman, you have to go live by yourself in the jungle with nothing but yourself for one year. All you can eat is one plant. That plant gives you power, insight and ways to communicate with the, the other plants and their spirits. They teach you how to use them, what they do for the good of the body, for the, for the good of the soul. Somebody told me a couple secrets on that on that matter. Some plants try to corrupt you in the jungle. Some spirits want to give you great gifts and great power, but they're gonna ask something in return. They may ask you material possessions, money. They may ask you blood sacrifice. They may ask you sacrifice loved ones and during that whole year you gotta resist and Don Lucho resisted because he is a awesome beautiful man full of love and compassion um, the ayahuasca we did was called ayahuasca cielo which is the sky that is the ayahuasca to heal people and help them but there are other kinds of ayahuasca, bad kinds. Some sh bad shamans look like they're good people, but they aren't. There is something called the ayahuasca thunder, where they can actually call on the lightning bolt to kill the person they need to sacrifice to the plants. Some other shamans will connect with you through, the, through their ceremonies. Once they've connected, they can suck your energy off anywhere you are around the world. It's like a little bit in... Makes, it made me think of uh, in quantum physics, quantum entanglement, which is like you could have a particle here and have another particle which are connected in quantum, in quantum entanglement, which would be 70,000 million light years away. And if you stimulate the one that's here, the one that's away will get stimulated by some 
thing they can't explain yet, but it is scientific fact. It's a bit like the connection that you have between two um, uh, twins. When one gets hurt, the other one feels it, if he, if, even if he's at the other halfway around the world. So, yeah, that's what somebody told me. So you go back home and you'll always always feel tired because it's gonna suck your energy energy from away. And that's that's what he's gotta pay to get his powers. So uh, where was I? One year in the jungle. So Don Lucho wasn't by himself, there were three facilitators, Luz, which comes from Netherlands, who helps you translate and uh, when you need to purge, she, she helps you get up and go to the toilet and if you feel bad, she's gonna try and comfort you. There are two others, Maximiliano and uh, Carolina, which are from Venezuela. Uh, they do ayahuasca in just the ceremonies. Carolina does just a small amount, like maybe a third of the cup. And Mac I don't know how much Maximiliano does. I think he does the full, the full cup. I'm not sure. One thing's for sure is that uh, Don Lucho does a full cup. And he's 69 years old. He's so full of energy. That guy doesn't never stops. Like a center, Cavitari center, is, it costs 800 USD for a week. But part of the money is to help save the jungle and uh, to help the small village, which is uh, right beside uh, the center. A uh, one hour walk from the center, so something like that. So, and there, I've seen some places where they have a $3,200 a week place and you sleep in a marble condominium. They're owned by Americans, they use anybody. They find some guy who just knows the two plants and he goes, cut, goes and cuts them off and they're not gonna help you spiritually. And they're, they are more, uh, you're more likely to have bad experiences with those people because they're there for the money and they don't know what they're doing. They're not real shamans. So Capitaria Estación is the best. Uh, one thing I forgot to say before I started the video is uh, go into my uh, on my page. There is a playlist. There are two videos. One made by Don Lucho about the reasons why he's doing it, which is a great video, and one about a guy who went there. And the video is pretty great because it it shows you the vibe that there is in that place a smooth vibe full of energy you're connected to the jungle and everything it's fucking awesome and this video is a general one but before you see my video where I talk about my personal experiences uh, please go watch a documentary on ayahuasca which is in that same list too it's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a lot of info there good for you because I can't uh, remember everything or I can't explain everything some things you can't put in words I'm trying real hard though but you know so Don Lucho oh yeah a bit of a bit about my experience personal experience Don Lucho really wants to help you so me for me it took like three ceremonies to really break through and uh, when I did, I had a smile right there. Don Lucho kept looking at me and, and smiled and kept laughing because he was uh, happy that I broke, through, finally broke through, and that I felt better. Because uh, now, now I love myself, which I thought I never would be able to, for some reason. So thank you, Don Lucho. I appreciate that. Uh, second thing about the shamans and the AIDS, because um, Maximiliano and Carolina, they sing, they sing like Don Lucho does. They sing I things called Icaros, which are sacred songs that were taught to them by the plants. I know it sounds crazy, but I asked Maximiliano about that part, and he told me that like ten years ago when he went 
after one of the ceremonies, he went back to his tambo. The tambo is a small apartment he got, like a, a shed in the middle of the jungle. You, you go uh, sleep there by yourself. And uh, Mama Ayahuasca, the spirit of the plant, came to him and she, she sang the, the music to him. The next, just once, and he knew it the next day. And uh, after the second ceremony, he went back to his tambo, closed his eyes, and she taught him the words to that song. Once, and he knew it. And that specific, one of those songs, he was, uh, he performed for us, for us to record him. Uh, Carolina wasn't too happy about that, because it's a secret taught by the plant. And it was the first time he sang it without being on Ayahuasca, so thank you Maximiliano for that and uh, so I can show people how it is. Um, so yeah, the Icaros are part of the ceremony, they're really important. They got this little leaf thing, it's like a couple of leaves crumbled together and they, they make the rhythm of the song. And they bring up some energy. I, for myself, I always felt like it was like a bird going up. It's like, yeah, the wings of a bird. For some reason, I don't know why. It, well, it elevated me, maybe that's why. But those Icaros, they're really important. They, they bring out, they call on the spirits from the jungle. They call on, call on the spirit of Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca spirit is an anaconda and an old woman who's there to help you. So a lot of people, when they experience their first visions, they see a big anaconda coming straight at them. That's what I saw too. It was like a spirit anaconda. I couldn't see its body, I could see its contour, but it was made out of light and it was pink, but it was coming straight at me with the mouth open. And a couple years back, I. Uh, I made exercises to know what was my spirit animal, and it's a black panther or a black jaguar, I don't know. And when I saw that big snake face coming straight at me, I called upon my spirit animal and it came. It just came and it just bit its head off. Big mistake. Uh, you have to let uh, the snake eat you to uh, commune with it and to accept its energy. But Carolina told me it was a uh, to be expected to make mistakes on our first trips because you don't know what's gonna happen. So, uh, about the Icaros, yeah. The Icaros, for my first trip, when they stopped singing between songs, I felt the energy go down. My visions almost stopped each time, too. When he started singing the next song, my energy got up and my visions came through again. It was really awesome and unex inexplainable. I don't know. They are part of this. Thing. They are part of the thing. So if you would do ayahuasca by yourself at home, that would be a big. That would that would be missed a lot for your spiritual journey. I think. And some people live different Icaros differently. I mean. Maximiliano's Icaros were had more energy and he sings deeper. His voice is deeper and they brought up more energy. And one of the one he sang which was the deepest for his voice, me I felt like it brought a lot of energy but it was okay. But some for some other people it brought the purge up. Like when he started singing, we were fifteen people in the in the Kamala, which is the big round building, which is doesn't really have walls, it's all string. And uh, yeah, about eight people started uh, purging at the same time, which uh, made me laugh a lot. Made me laugh a lot because they didn't do that for me. And we were used to hear each other puke because uh, that's part of the thing too. When you purge, I know I'm going left and right, but when you purge, sometimes you feel like you purge like a gal in the water but when you look in your bucket you only have like this so you're like I felt something come out but it wasn't what I thought it was no it wasn't it 
what it brought out was some bad shit that's deep into you, some bad emotions, some bad feelings, some bad things you remember that happened to you, some trauma. So ayahuasca goes deep into you and when she comes out, because you vomit the ayahuasca, when it comes out it brings out some of that stuff. So you don't feel that bad about vomiting, actually afterwards you feel way better, you feel lighter in some way because some of your old shit came out and um, yeah that's what ayahuasca does what that's one of the things ayahuasca does so and when uh, Carolina started singing her ghettos hers were more medicine like or they were calmer, their energy was smoother too. Because when she sang, nobody purged, everybody felt a sense of peace and harmony, which was great because sometimes it got really intense. And then when she started singing, it was like, oh, and everybody relaxed, and there was this smooth vibe around the Kamala for everyone. It was incredible. So her song. And her voice too, she's got a beautiful voice, a soothing voice. So yeah, so that's the, the difference. And most of the Ikaros were sung by uh, Don Lucho. But uh, when the two others started singing, there was a big difference in the energy in the room. Um, <laughs> Okay, one of the things you have to know about ayahuasca is that... Alright, the... What's the word for that? The, 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 the chakras. The chakras exist, that's for sure. Like, every civilization talks about it. Your third eye is one of your chakras. I didn't think too much about it because I never experienced my third eye being open. Some uh, like the Buddhist monks and the Shaolin monks and people who've done meditation for 30, 40 years, they can open up their third eye. They can reach the higher realm that we reach when we do ayahuasca. So we are not used to using it and fe feeling it either. But ayahuasca, it like pries it open, wide open. So at first you. You're not sure about what you're feeling. For me, felt like I had two levels of vision. It was my body vision, like my uh, my real eyes, was like down there, and up here were the visions from ayahuasca, from my third eye, and I really felt the energy coming in my third eye. So, I the lower part of me, like I heard the songs, heard the people vomit, I felt. The, the ground and the, the Kamala and up there were the visions and the insights that Mama Ayahuasca would send me but it's really strange and you don't know how to use it because it's the first time you, you feel that way and some people resisted and one thing you have to not do on Ayahuasca is resist what's happening you have to let it go you have to go with the flow that she told me and repeated me in my third ceremony one woman uh, the first night I love her I love everyone there by the way I won't say her name because uh, you know it's private uh, sh she resisted at first in her first ceremony and she purged like crazy it was like at one point she was like am I gonna die and they told her to let it go but she felt those waves of energy coming in and in since she resisted, it made her puke every time. If she would have gone with it, maybe it would have been lesser. Maybe she would have felt better. But maybe that was one of the lessons Mama Ayahuasca tried to teach her, was to let go. And a lot of people nowadays don't know how to do that. Let go. It's hard for them. Fucking So you have to go with the flow. You have to let it 
come into you and accept the energy and you have to be thankful for it all the way you always have to say thank you mama ayahuasca thank you for letting me live this thank you for the insights you're giving me thank you for seeing through my bullshit because that is one thing that people won't allow themselves to face is that everyone is full of bullshit everyone lies to themselves about parts of themselves they lie to other people they pretend like they're okay but they're not like but you can't lie to mama ayahuasca she sees through that because she sees straight to your core right into your soul and she knows who you really are so and she shows you stuff and you're like yeah i think i knew that but i couldn't see it and now i do so that's a pretty great, good step as a first step to take t with her. Mama Iwaska is also another side of another deity, which is called Pachamama. Pachamama is also known by the name of Gaia in the, in the West. She is the mother creator of all living things on this planet. She is the goddess of uh, feminine energy, which is doesn't have anything to do with women, but creation, intu and intuition, love, compassion. She is so full of love and compassion, forgiveness. She's fucking amazing. So since she is the creator of life, and Mama Iwaska is a plant, and they are the same as a bit like uh, the Trinity in Christianity, you know, the Son, the God, and the Holy Spirit, they're actually one, so it's a bit of the same. That's the way I see it, at least. So yeah, you don't, you don't resist, you let go. Uh, when you see the snake, you have to let it eat you, <laughs> or bite you, or something. Don't kill it, that's not a good thing. He's gonna come and bite your ass off right away. Um, about ayahuasca, when the ceremony is done after five hours, it actually keeps you awake for a couple hours still. And uh, like the ceremonies are in total darkness. You go one by one, get your little cup. Like a, it's like a shooter. It's like uh, mud. Tastes like dirt, sour dirt, or oh, it's fucking disgusting. But it's good for you, you know. Like a lot of things, you, you gotta pay the price. So during the ceremony, after two hours, they're gonna ask, they're gonna light a candle, and you don't want that. Well, not me at least, because it fucks up your visions. But they're gonna ask people around if they want a second cup. Uh, it's not gonna give you more visions. Maybe it's gonna open you more emotionally. It's gonna help you see clearer through some bullshit. Maybe it's gonna help some deep shit to come out again, to, to purge the, those bad emotions. So me, no, I've never take the second cup because I was sure I was gonna puke on Don Lucho right away. Because, uh, you taste it when it comes in and you taste it when it comes out too you know so that was enough for me two times in a two times in a night that was enough for me i didn't want to puke more i didn't have anything else to puke anyways not on those nights so yeah that's the disgusting part because vomiting uh, it's, it's good for you feels good too afterwards um so yeah, when they, the, the ceremony ends, and he does his uh, prayer to close the ceremony about Don Lucho, they tell you that they light up a candle, and then they tell you that you can sleep in the Kabbalah if you want to, there's no problem, you can stay for uh, some time, because when you don't, in, the to in total darkness, you don't feel confused, but when, because you got no point of reference, but then when they light up that candle, uh, you've got a point of reference and your vision is blurry and when you move your arms in front of light there are trails behind it and you're um, you're wobbly too really wobbly maybe something about 
your inner ear or your vision being blurry. I don't know. So yeah, like two to three times I stayed there for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. And then I went back to my tumble, wobbly as, as hell. I almost fell in the lake once. That would have been fun. But then you go lie down <coughs> and you close your eyes and you may still have some visions but without the Icarus it's not as powerful and uh, you may or you may have insights still she can teach you some stuff still while you're by yourself in the middle of the jungle so she keeps you up until like four in the morning you sleep for two three hours you get up and the thing is you don't feel tired and you won't feel tired during the day either. I didn't, at least. Like, she gives you so much energy. and you, It's like you absorb the energy of the jungle around you. And everything gives you energy. So you don't feel tired. Even after that week, I'd, that wasn't was was tiring. It was all the driving I did. So, yeah, she's going to keep you up. But it doesn't matter. But you have to get up though, you can't sleep through because every morning at 7, around 7, you have to go see uh, Franco, which is like a nurse. He's going to give you your plant medicine for the day. There are like 3 or 5 buckets with uh, liquids made out of certain plant medicines in the jungle. They keep you from uh, getting sick from disease and uh, they help you, uh, they help your body feel better to cleanse your body for my part I had to uh, drink two more than other people because I got bad juju and that bad shit in my body I took too much drugs when I was younger and uh, emotion maybe it's for emotional stuff too I don't know um, about that I thought I had something else to say um, Oh yeah, every day, like the first day we got there, Don Lucho had a, an airplane problem so he couldn't be there, so they gave us plant medicine which made us purge like crazy, we had like three to four uh, uh, buckets of water to drink and would make you vomit but it's to clean your body, so if you purge more there you're gonna purge less during the ceremony. Uh, and you can purge down there too. Didn't happen to me. I'm glad of it. I'd rather vomit than uh, have diarrhea, anyways. So yeah. So you first when you get there, you get to, in the, the Kamala and you do a group session where everybody talks about the reasons they are there, more or less. But the day before the first ceremony, the next day. So right away you get closer to people because you know part of their history and you puke 15 people looking at each other puking in a circle so that kind of makes you closer I guess you feel closer to them for some reason the day before the ceremony you have a one-on-one -on -one with Donald Show where you explain uh, more in detail your problems the reasons you're here uh, why you don't love yourself or people are there for different reasons you don't really have to have big problems to get to go there because you can always be a better person and uh, you may do ayahuasca 30 times 30 times it's going to be different she's going to teach you something else every time so yeah you do the one-on-one -on -one with Don Lucho that's when he told uh, the people I had to drink uh, other plant medicines because of what happened to me when I was young and everything and uh, then you do the ceremony but every day after the ceremony you do a group session one where you explain what you saw what you lived how you felt and uh, like Carolina and Luz would translate to Don Lucho and then he'd give his advice towards what you lived and he'd explain what you lived if you didn't understand.
but everybody that's a group thing so everybody so you know what everybody went through that's a good thing because maybe some people felt ecstasy the first time but you had a fucking nightmare of a night so that gives you hope if you felt bad that maybe something good is gonna happen in the next one gives you also perspective to see how different people react differently to it that every people brings in their own history and it, the ceremony goes accordingly to that history and then that brings you even closer together like right now I miss I miss them they're I call them my Capitari family like not just the people from Capitari but the people I I learned to love and uh, with whom I've, sh I've shared everything and they've shared everything with me too I really I miss them and I that was one of the things I didn't like about leaving that place felt like I was losing something love you guys everyone there so that is another good thing that you make friends from around the world in a week and you feel more connected to them to s than some people you've known for 20 years who just won't open up or well you've never opened up this much at least because once you're under or over let's say you can even feel the, the other people's emotion in the Kamala and sometimes you feel like you can help them the ones who feel bad you can send them good energies and you feel like it does something actually it's really weird to explain you have to experience it uh, so about me personally well it filled me with love filled me with compassion forgiveness thankfulness for everything I have I've never felt so thankful in my life for the people around me and the, live I li the life I live which I used to hate so much I used to hate myself so much too now now that's all gone I want to live and I'm happy to do so even even if I like to go through a lot of bullshit, I'm happy to face it. I mean, that's gonna make me a better person anyways, in the end. You just gotta see the good side of everything, so. And that taught me that. Uh, in the end of that week, we made a wedding celebration, a spiritual, spiritual wedding for two people, Andrea and Kyle, who met there, I think was four years ago, and they fell in love, and Kyle decided to quit his job in England to go live and uh, marry Andrea, which is awesome, so, but during that day we had a jungle trek, same thing, so we went to uh, Isla de los Monos, which is an island where they have uh, monkeys, and they told us not to put the put insect repellent or a solar uh, screen because uh, you give them their hand and they climb on you and they sit on you and they lick your uh, they lick your sweat because it's salty and they love it. It's so funny. Uh, Andrea's friend Roxanne got pissed off. <laughs> that was funny. And now uh, some monkeys like they had like this huge penis coming out. And the guy said, no, that's not their penis, that's their clitoris. <laughs> so the women, the women were like, whoa, those, those gals are lucky. They're good. They must be easy to satisfy. And one climbed on uh, Kyle. And I was like, whoa, you wear the clitoris well. <laughs> and Roxanne was like, oh. and she laughed and she was like, you're so dumb. Don't say shit like that. So that was the fun, the fun, well, the funnest part of the expedition. After we went to like a fish pond thing where they had piranhas, paichi, which is arapaima, which are the biggest uh, freshwater fish in the in the Americas, alligators and stuff like that. And we had a nice boat ride too on the Amazon River where we saw pink dolphins, really, really pink. They're small dolphins, but they're really, really pink. 
younger ones at least and the uh, stupid part I uh, charged my cell phone at the place we were eating at Capitari and I left it on the charge I didn't bring it so that I don't have photos or videos of it but my friend Tim uh, filmed me and he's supposed to send me a video don't forget Tim send me the video uh, so yeah I'm gonna put that on as, uh, as soon as I get it so that's about it uh, I know my French video will last 10 minutes longer, but I, maybe I forgot to say some things, but it doesn't matter. Gonna, so when I do my video, my personal one, please go watch the Capitari Center videos first in the, in the list. And watch a, a doc on the Ayahuasca or DMT, please. It's gonna explain more than I can. So uh, that's it for now. I'm gonna my next video is gonna be my personal experiences, my uh, ceremonies, and uh, I'm gonna have a couple of videos of uh, the rest of my trip too. So love you all. Take care, and uh, well, love you. <laughs>